why if you choose to use a bank in their system, the EIN is a prerequisite for that. That's why you, you, you went to the process of getting it. Beyond that, in the long term, look, um, we're not here to, to kowtow to their system and, and uh, see that we are recognised as a subsidiary of their system. We're not a subsidiary. They're a subsidiary of us, ultimately. So um, the EIN is really there to allow you to come up with a temporary remedy of having a bank account as your trust number to trade and then to conduct the business of the trust as trustee. Yes, thanks, thanks Frank, for going ahead and answering that question. I know it's probably been covered uh, quite a bit in the past, but uh, thanks for covering that then for the those that are on the chat. We have another question regarding who wrote the canons and when. So the question is just uh, who will... Who wrote the canons and when were they written? Okay. Well, I'm the editor of the canons, but I'm not the author of the information. The canons come from a research and consolidation of books such as the Laws of Akhenaten, the Maxims of Bacon, the Maxims extracted from Holy Scripture, such as the Bible, Blackstone's commentaries, and a range of hundreds of books and consolidate together in a form that makes clear the bedrock of law. So I'm the editor of that, but that is source of information. Now, we don't do citations in maxims and we don't do citations in canons. We certainly have other texts that have been worked on that go to references similar to the way you would view the references in Black's or any other one of their texts where they give you citations. But the citations will then be referring back to scripture, will be referring back to original texts um, as a stronger source than simply case law. If you, if you have a firm piece of scripture that um, is at the heart of a, a matter, then that is stronger than any case law in their system. And that should be rem remembered that all their case law, all their system ultimately are claimed back to the King James Bible. So if you, if you know your scripture, if you know uh, the private side, then that is an enormously powerful asset, even today with ignorant judges. Thank you, Frank. All right, so there was a question regarding... Um, mining companies, but it looks like it's just partial. So I'm going to read what it says here, and maybe you can uh, go ahead and answer that question. Uh, something about the mining companies, uh, and this guest feels that they could really benefit from what Ecadia has to offer. Do you have any suggestions for uh, those areas regarding mining companies? I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't quite know. I mean... <clears throat> The, the, the point is that, that the, the problem of the world today is, is, isn't just simply that there is a group of individuals that seek to control the world for their own benefit. It's that they're doing it in a wholly incompetent manner. And so they're creating waste, pollution and unsustainable cycles. So part of UKDA is about introducing methods and ideas and competence back into society and in that process, it is a benefit to all, to all sectors, including mining. But beyond that, I can't really comment because I'm not quite sure the intent, the deeper intent of the question. But yeah, whether it be mining, whether it be any form of commerce, uh, reliability and certainty are key ingredients. And in our system, we say that all contracts are registered so that we don't get into this implied contract or long-winded contracts or secret clause contracts Anyone that's been in small business and medium business know that the central impediment to moving forward is your major clients, your key clients, not honouring the terms of contract. So there is a role to be played in any society in helping the merchants perform better and be more efficient by making sure that the field remains fair. So that's all I can really say to that other than, than what we've done, okay? All right, great. 
Thank you, Frank. It, it, part of it, the question must not have been in the chat, so that was a little bit incomplete. I just tried to make. Uh, like I, that I see now. Okay, I yeah. just actually see. Sorry, Terry. I see it. Uh, it's been qualified. They're referring to the concept of mining companies involved in okay. fracking. Oh, okay, okay. And land title. And, okay. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, and and the, the point of land title is to make that clearer. Um, I and I have an issue, and have had an issue for a long time, where the system only gives you a limited uh, fee simple, if if at all fee simple, right over six inches of dirt, and the rest is open slather for for mining rights. So if it clears that up, then I think that's good. It's a very important point. Yes, all right. Yeah. And you see the the next question, uh, what does the name Acadia mean? If you want to just clarify that a little bit, and then I do have yeah. a... Okay. Sure. Unique collective awareness of DIA. DIA is a building block. They're set statements of, of what's called uh, uh, symbolic uh, meaning, called DA, and it's the language uh, that underpins the knowledge that's presented in Acadia. So DIA is a statement of uh, intent, fact, observation, comment, constructed from uh, symbols that have been assigned meaning, and idea are then uh, added together to create what's called an idea, and then ideas are put together to create what's known as a model, and then models are put together to create what's called Eucadia. So Eucadia is unique collective awareness in motion with intent. So if you want to give it another word, Eucadia means a living dream, a dream in motion. Okay? Great. Thank you, Frank. Uh, Ron, are you there? we got Ron on the phone lines again. Hi, Frank. Hi, Ron. Hey, I was reading um, the journey to Eucadia around Chapter 20. You talk about Atlantis and Plato's... Uh, description of where it possibly could be and you had interpreted it to be the, the the plains of Peru you know the upper plains of Peru around Lake Titicaca yep um, but that is the same area that the Anunnaki landed and basically let their their armies loose on on um on Earth, right? Yes. Back 275,000 years ago? Yep. That was in the Book of Green Race, I think. Man, no, no. Yep. The Day Magisterium. The Day Magisterium, yeah. Yeah, I've got all these books running together now. <laughs> but anyway, was Atlantis created at that time period? Because, you know, they had built all of these uh, water moats and uh, they had agriculture you know, extensive agriculture going on. Now, was Atlantis built by those uh, slave beings from the Anunnaki? Yes. Well, I, I believe that the Atlantis story has multiple overlays, and, and certainly there are descriptions by Plato that perfectly fit the plains of Peru and Lake Titicaca as, as a as definitely a, a central place. And I don't know if Google even permits you now to do this, but if you ever look at the hills um, down from the lake, uh, nowhere else in the world will you see this, but there is an extraordinary alien design in the hills that is um, thousands of years old, that is uh, a design of, of agriculture and water catchment that is unlike anywhere else. The closest thing I can describe it to you is think of hills tattooed like the symbols of the of the Celts. Um, a quite extraordinary pattern. Um, and really, it, it, it literally looks like an alien mosaic. Uh, there's nowhere else in the world that you'll see this. And it's, and, it, and, it, and it's ruins that was not devised by the Indians. So a higher race designed a mosaic of alien water catchment. I mean, it's extraordinary. Right. But... Um, I would say to you that there are other layers on top of this. For example, the Khazars, the Khazars who we know 
um, as the combining of the land-based uh, pirates the, um, uh, across the plains, the Scardian tribes and the Menashe escaping the Great Plagues, when they combined and, and formed a formidable empire that eventually broke up, for a time they had a capital, and that capital almost certainly was the island of Odessa, Odessa actually being on an island originally. So there is, there is evidence over history of island empires suffering calamity, um, Crete and other times of history. So I think there's more to this. I think the story has resonance over every few thousand years because there's been someone that fits the profile. So I think there's a lot of there's a lot more to it. Yeah. Okay. So they think Atlantis dropped into that other lake, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Wouldn't it be interesting to go find it? Well, yeah, you'd have to dig out a fair bit of dirt and oh, yeah. stuff, and you'd certainly find. It. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thanks, Frank. Okay. Thank you, Ron. Bye. All right, back to uh, Washington. Uh, are you there, Washington? Hello. Arthur? Yes, Arthur again. Got a little follow-up question. Um, yep. Frank, I was wondering if you could point me to an area of reading uh, concerning your answer of the last question I asked. And if you didn't recall that, it was about the relationship of Eucadia to uh, societies that didn't want to adopt it. Because well, you did, yeah, you did I, answer the question, but I didn't. I didn't get an area where I could actually check check that out. No, what I would uh, what I'd suggest to you is that there are there's a covenant of one heaven which has an area of membership, and then there is the charters of the Globe Union and the various unions that have a me- an area of membership. What I'd ask you to do is give us the next week to review those areas and as I promised to you I don't believe it's clear enough okay. to do an audit on okay. that and then what I would love to hear from you you know by next chat is whether you feel that that is clear enough okay great I, I guess I didn't catch that that it was actually going to be looked at that soon okay fantastic um, one other question I wanted to ask and this is a it's, it's a little bit of a of you vague question but hopefully you know, it's not too vague. I'm concerned about there's this this question of competence, and there's this need to be competent concerning yep. our current our current predicament with the with this, the Roman cult system that we're in, uh, because there's so much fraud that if we're not competent, then we're going to be walked all over, right? We're basically going to be slaves if we're not competent. And I'm concerned that this question of competence will be transferred onto an incredibly complex system called Eucadia <laughs> and that people who don't that aren't hardwired that way, you know, that that simple folks, people who are more interested in in artistic pursuits perhaps. Sure. Um well it's will, a, it's will, a good will, will be compromised because they 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 don't wish to be competent in the system called Eucadia, and if that's the case, then Eucadia is kind of putting a necessity on them, which is exactly what we're trying to get rid of. Again, it's an excellent question. It's an excellent question, and, and, and let me answer it this way. How, well, first, you can ask a couple of quick questions from you. Um, sure. have you. Have you read a few pages of the Covenant, yeah, of Covenant One Heaven? Yes, yes, I've gone into it. I haven't. I can't say that I've, that I've read it. I've read the complete covenant. I've gotten into positive law a little bit. I've mainly focused on some of the more specific stuff, like the ecclesiastical deed poll and the, how to succeed in court and some some of those areas. But I, I can't say as I've gotten into the meat of okay, of the covenant. that's right, that's right. I, I hope you do because because I think this the answer to this question will become clearer. You heard tonight me say a few times that no one stands between you and the divine. Absolutely. Yep. Right. And you heard me say that you are a divine moral spirit. Yeah. Right. Right. And that that your spirit is fully competent with you know, there's there should be no dispute that your spirit is fully competent, whether your right. flesh is competent or not. Yeah? Well that's right. that's the essential message. That's all you really need to know. See, 
they house